today we're hitching up and taking a ride down into a remote desert canyon and back in time. This is a trail guide to Upper Coyote Canyon, beginning near the high desert town of Anza in Southern California and located within the Anza Borrego Desert State Park. Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Media. Follow along as we take a journey along part of the route used in 1775 by Juan Batista de Anza, a Spanish military officer, as he led over 300 people and over 1,000 head of livestock on an adventurous colonizing expedition from Mexico, or New Spain as he would have called it then, to Northern California near Monterey. In addition to the history of Spanish exploration in this area, this area was and still is home to the mountain Cahuilla, who historically migrated with the seasons between the desert and the mountains in this area. I'll be giving you a complete tour of this area so you'll know exactly what to expect and what to look for when visiting either on foot, by four-wheel drive, motorcycle, or maybe even by horse. This route begins in a high desert town of Anza, California, not to be confused with Anza Borrego Desert below. You'll start by taking the Terwilliger Road turnoff of Highway 371 heading towards the south. Then you'll turn onto Coyote Canyon Road several miles later, heading east, and follow it as the paved road ends at some mailboxes. Coyote Canyon Road continues to your right, and this is where you want to air down if you're in a Jeep or other four-wheel drive like I am. So let's talk a little bit about difficulty. This is a four-wheel drive route. You'll need something with very good ground clearance and low range gearing and probably at least 31 or 32 inch tires. I never had to use my lockers, although I was close to needing them several times. Motorcycles traverse this route all the time. Adventure bikes will find a challenge here with steep hills, rocks, and plenty of sand lower down in the canyon. Smaller dual sport or plated dirt bikes will find the route fairly easy. This is an out and back route. A long time ago, you could drive all the way through to the desert floor and eventually to the town of Borrego Springs. However, the state park has closed the area between middle and upper willows due to wildlife concerns. Please respect the closed area, tread lightly, leave no trace, and be a good example for future generations of off-roaders. Also, beware that you are entering a remote area with no cell service, no people, no paved roads. This is the backcountry. You need to carry water, food, tools, spare tires, first aid, warm clothing, and if you're like me, some sort of a satellite or emergency communication device. I use a Garmin inReach for text messaging with my family. After traversing several back roads through the backcountry area of the town of Anza, you'll start to leave the high desert behind and you'll begin to descend the canyon itself. Dramatic views await you as you get closer to the canyon edge. At this point, you'll probably still be in four-wheel high, but you are approaching what's called the Turkey Track, a challenging steep section of trail with embedded and loose rocks where you want to have four-wheel drive low engaged. How are you guys? Good. Good. You wanted to be there on a Jeep commercial, huh? <laughs> yeah, I do make videos, so. You going in for the night? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to stay. I'm going to maybe go down to the cabin and check out spaces down there, or I might go turn left, and sometimes I go up that way. Nobody there right now. If you go to the cabin and go to the right and go back in those canyons, yeah. they're really nice back there, and there's yeah. campsites along the creek. And yeah. Pretty cool. Thank you, guys. Hey, have a good one. Yeah, you too. Have a great ride. Be safe. Well, thank you. As you drop further down the canyon, you'll encounter some deep ruts that really test your suspension articulation. When you get to the bottom, you'll traverse a wash and then some more rock crawling before getting into the main north-south wash. When you come to this junction here, left would take you up canyon into horse canyon, which eventually dead ends with some nice camping possibilities, but turning right will take you down Coyote Canyon. 
for our adventure, we're heading down Coyote Canyon today. There are some more open areas where you can enjoy a little bit of speed, but don't get too crazy because there are other trail users that can come out of nowhere. In a few miles, you'll eventually reach this junction here. Left will take you to Bailey's Cabin, right will take you into Alder Canyon. I'll be exploring Alder Canyon in a minute, but for now, let's head over to Bailey's Cabin, a popular camping location. Yes, you can sleep in the cabin if you're lucky enough to be the first one there. However, since I am not a fan of the hantavirus, I'll be sleeping in my rooftop tent. Now, if you go beyond the cabin to your east, you'll reach the closed area of Upper Willows. From here, you can hike down to the Anza Monument, which describes some interesting history of the area. I like to imagine what it must have been like for the early explorers, not knowing if they'd find water, food, or shelter for the evening. We sure have it good these days. The 1775 through 76 Anza expedition actually camped in this area around Christmas time in 1775. After taking some rest, they continued through Anza, San Jacinto, and then towards the coast, stopping at missions along the way and finally reaching Monterey in early March 1776. Settlers from that expedition began creating the Presidio of San Francisco, which today is part of the Golden State Recreational Area. I think people like Juan Batista de Anza were probably the true overland expeditioners compared to us these days with our fancy equipment. But enough of that, let's get back on the trail. I set up my camp near the cabin. Dispersed camping is allowed in the state park, but fires must be in metal containers only. It was pretty windy all night long, and I saw temps in the upper 30s. Keep in mind, I filmed this trip in early March. Spring and fall would be best here. Winter can be fairly cold and windy. Summer can be very hot, with also a threat of flash floods from the Santa Rosa Mountains above during the summer southwest monsoon. Starting off day two, I decided to go ahead and explore Alder Canyon. So this is a dead end side canyon that ends up with the cottonwood trees, a running stream, at least when I visited in March, and some really awesome camping sites. You'll look east across Coyote Canyon with views of Toro and Santa Rosa Peaks high above. For reference, those peaks are above 8,000 feet and buried in snow in the winter, while down below we're enjoying the warm sunshine in the desert. Going back up the canyon and towards civilization, consider a side trip up Horse Canyon if you have time. There's some neat rock obstacles further up the canyon if you want to test out your rig. Climbing up the turkey track, I recommend four low so your transmission doesn't overheat. Careful line placement will mean avoiding any issues if you have good clearances and pretty large tires. My Jeep is on 35s with no lift and I only heard one or two small scrapes. Getting back into the town of Anza, the temperature will be 15 degrees cooler than where you came from. There's a lot to see in this area. Red Mountain, Thomas Mountain, Santa Rosa, Pigeon Springs, and Idlewild and all of its trails to the north. I sincerely hope this trail guide was entertaining and also useful if you're considering heading out to this area. Please subscribe because I'm going to be creating many more trail guides for similar routes in the future. I really appreciate you watching. A thumbs up on the video helps my channel grow. Please remember I don't accept sponsorships, affiliate links, or any of that spam nonsense. We'll see you out on the trail, and remember, please leave it better than you found it. Until next time, happy trails.